you have a history like mine, it means you have to teach your children how to drive early. Hey, that's it. I do good, you gonna feed me? <laughs> Beats all you never saw Been in trouble with the law Since the day they was born Straightening the curves So it's, uh, been working out Jesus Christ Don't scare me Don't scare me Alright, Biscuit, you can go for it This is gonna be fun I mean serious. This is going to be serious, good fun, and you're all welcome. Draw any time you're ready, Finn. Yeah. Okay. We got, we got a piece of weapon. Play again! <laughs> Now, I'm your superior officer. Right? I know that. I know that. <laughs> Look, no hands. <laughs> You're doing right now what they call blind driving. They would have a camera on me like they are here. My hands would be out here and you'd be doing the stunt driving for me. Just like that. Because as an actor, I'm not supposed to know how to drive. You know that's not true. <laughs> well, Lulu ain't what she used to be. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> now, where do you see? Where do you see my chair? It's called the Jimmy Best chair. Oh, really? Because you had it when we did the Dukes, and I have had insisted on one ever since. It's three quarter. Well, we already drove by the entrance to Paramount Ranch. So I don't know where the rest of the guys are. We'll turn around up here. What did I do wrong? First one to throw a football. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I mean, really, I mean, a Dukes of Hazard, uh, General Lee's, did we go through? I know. I know exactly. Yeah. How many? 409. 300. I thought it was Well, there were, there were no 309. Someone came in and went out so fast. Yeah. 309, uh, and we had it, you know, this that does not include the show cars that, you know, they had out at World of yeah. shows and things like that. You might have guessed we do things a little different in Hazard County. See you later. <laughs> what? I think that's funny. We're a little backwards, get it? Backwards? No. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Thank you. I'm glad How to are see you, you beautiful? Yeah. I love you. Hi there. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. You look pretty. Oh, so beautiful. Hi, beautiful. That's my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so nice to see you. Drop the, that little toy. Drop the car, yeah. 
The only one that. of us that hadn't gotten any older. Well, no, here's one that hadn't gotten any older. <laughs> I saw you last night, boy. Would you turn that off? <laughs> you do? My brakes. This is the brakes. Yeah, we're fix that, would you, Cooter? Honk <laughs> oh, the horn. Honk the horn, Biscuit. Biscuit, huh? Look out, watch your ears. All right, so we've been doing this since the fall of 1978, which was 25 years ago, and the first time the cast got together. November 7th. November 7th, wow. 1978, the Holiday Inn. Uh, to read the first episode, One Armed Bandits. In Atlanta. Yes. No, in Conyers, Georgia. Conyers, Georgia. Con right. Exit, the old exit 41, in fact, uh, the Holiday Inn. Off the uh, I-95. Uh, no, off of I-20. Don't fight. Say, oh. boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the historian. <laughs> but anyhow, and I'm sitting there thinking, we're reading this, and I'm just looking around, and there's, you know, I'm thinking, that's pretty good. You know, there's Jimmy Best and Sorrel Book and Denver Pyle, who are the, you know, all great. Classic actors. Classic yep. experience, bringing all that experience. You've Sonny got, Schroyer. You've got, well, me and Sonny, who were, you know, they found us in the swamp down there. The and same swamp. Sort of like <laughs> Rick. Under the same Rick like, <laughs> we was raised by wolves. <laughs> and, uh. Was I there? You came in, you came in the next week to do, uh, uh, repo. Sorrel and Denver and I arrived about the same time. We got John Schneider, we got Kathy Bach, we got Sorrel Book, we got Denver Bach. And I said, holy mackerel, I said, you know how this is going to be? Sonny Schroyer. I got the Germans here today. When I first auditioned, uh, like I, I was doing Hooper with Burt Reynolds, and they called me over and said, do you want to do a series, would you like to go over and see about a series called Dukes of Hazard?" I said, I don't want to do a gang thing. And they said, no, this is a good old boy thing. And I produced a picture for Bert, uh, with Sonny is in it, by the way, in, uh, down in, in Georgia, Conyers, Georgia. They said, they're going to shoot the whole thing down in Conyers, Georgia. I said, are you kidding? I said, if they'll shoot it down there, you know, I would do Gene Autry and who doo doo it in the saddlebag. You know, I don't care. <laughs> it was also, you know, a lot of people forget it was a 9 o'clock show. So it was a little rougher a little around risque. the edges. A little risque. Especially then, what they said about you two. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, that You're was, the oldest I'll what in Hazard County? <laughs> oldest virgin in Hazard County. Oh, okay. I remember it. I don't know what that means. Rod Amato, Rod Amato <laughs> says, uh, says, Enos, I want you to look at Daisy's legs right here. Her legs are right here. And I said, Rod. I said, I, I, I need Daisy's legs right here. I don't, I don't need your. So me being the accommodating there. actress that I am. Yeah, you came in and, and, and showed your leg and. Uh, For twelve hours. <laughs> I, I, I looked like I looked like an idiot studying a pimple uh, or something. You know? Was that a character part? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I was in character. Anyway, uh, anyway, he was right. He was right. I mean, I thought I would be inspired by your legs, your three million dollar legs, and I was inspired, but but I was a poor actor. I, I kept looking at one little spot. I should have, uh, you know, took it all in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. To me, yeah, you know, awesome. Sonny, for 25 yeah. years I've wondered about you, and I, <laughs> I still don't quite. I, I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're all together, I'd like to ask this cast one thing. Mm. Seven years. All of you had girlfriends and boyfriends and everything. Poor Roscoe, I was stuck with a hog and a dog. <laughs> right. There was an episode called Mrs. Roscoe P. Coltrane. Yeah, but she, she was, was a crook. A she was a, uh, well, yeah, so are you. <laughs> yes, there you go. Well, no, I'm, 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 I'm. Heart of gold. Yeah, I was a 12-year-old who liked Hot Pursuit. <laughs> okay, I finally right. got to see the front end of the General Lee. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Sitting right down there. that bar in the front. You didn't know that, did you? No, I did not know that. <laughs> I liked the rubber doll. What? What? What, <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I, I know. know. The blow-up Daisy Duke doll. Yeah, I yeah. like that. <laughs> that, that. Yeah, was there a blow-up Daisy Duke yes, doll? Yes, remember in the jail? It, it was I was in, in jail, jail, and then yeah. we oh, 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 oh. put the, the fake Daisy in there. She put the the rubber doll in there, and I thought it was her until I picked her up. And uh, it was, you know, it was nice that I could control Daisy for a, for a little while. Until she deflated? Yeah. <laughs> and Sonny still has that doll to <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kathy, Kathy, remember that... 
the beautiful profile that I had taken of myself and put in the hat for the makeup man? No, I was so freaked out working with everybody <laughs> in the beginning, and Jimmy knew just how to get me. He, the, I think it was my first Are you going to tell us? Gonna... Okay. Did, why, you know about this? I know oh, about it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell, but I'm surprised that you're going to tell Jimmy, it. Jimmy, well, you because I'm not surprised that you would bring it up, pardon the pun. But well, I, I, I was the one that brought it up. Were you really naked? He was so <laughs> naked. No, he had his gun belt on. Didn't you have your gun belt in your hat? He had his gun belt and his hat on. Let me tell you. Oh, and his cowboy boots. Does that count? <laughs> now, they could bleep this out. The makeup man used to hold the hat like this and make up your eyes. Well, of course, we're jerking our head around, talking to people. And they said, would you hold still? Would you hold still? Finally put a Playboy magazine centerfold in the center of the hat. Well, that got my attention. <laughs> and I thought, well, but poor Kathy. What about poor Kathy? She had nothing to look at. Yes. So <laughs> I went home, me. took a Polaroid shot of myself with my hat and my cowboy boots on, and they put it in the hat. Now, you fade out. The next morning, I forgot all about it. We're out there. I hear Kathy scream. I'm not the way it was a good scream or a bad scream. <laughs> was it a good scream? It was. I about fainted. It was so funny. <laughs> and I'm well, not going to explain not, that anymore. Was, <laughs> <laughs> so, I dare say. Sorrel Book had had a career as, you know, Yale School of Drama, yes. brilliant actor, Shakespeare, Broadway. Right. Career, we fixed that. But he had more fun <laughs> doing Boss Hog. Oh, I know. And, 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 and brought more joy. But, you know, with Sorrel. It made would, more money. When, when he would go out and do personal appearances, he was Boss Hogg. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't go as Sorrel Book, he went as Boss Hogg, and he put the costume on at 9 o'clock in the morning and maybe see thousands of people and never get the slightest, not only not get out of character, but be working improvisationally right. the whole time in character. And uh, he, he, he went it. out just about every weekend. The guy worked seven days a week. Well, I remember one of the first times I ever rehearsed with Boss, like you were saying, before the scene. It was when uh, Andy, Andrew Johnson was on the show playing the bad guy, the guy from uh, Dirty Harry. So I sat down in the chair and they started, uh, started running their lines in Japanese. Because <laughs> oh Boss was you know, a brilliant That's man. Right. He spoke six I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant man. And, and Andy had, uh, had also knew Japanese, so they started running the scene in Japanese. And whenever my part came, they just stop and look at me. I'd throw the line in English. <laughs> you know, Denver, Denver Pyle was a, uh, a sort of a, he was like an anchor. You know, I mean, that guy was so solid and so consistent, so experienced. Uh, and he was, you know, the, he was order. You know, Boss Hog and Brasco were the law, which, which in Hazard County was, you know, what it was. It, it, but. Denver Powell, as Uncle Jesse, was order. He was tradition. Yep. And, he was uh, family. And he family. taught, I think, not just the Dukes and the rest of us around there, but generations of kids how to behave. Right yep. from wrong, good from bad, a real moral authority. It was a great way to be able to, to, uh, to help raise your kids. And yeah, there was the driving and all that sort of things. But I've had so many people now over the years come back and say that they are they were so thankful to have a safe place to go on Friday night that actually helped them with their kids on Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. The things that I've done been involved in since it never ceases to amaze me how people just don't know how to deal with cars and cameras, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you spoiled us. I mean when I when I look at the show or I or do something else and I think, you know, gone are the days of the beautiful fallen oak tree and the water with the ducks on it and the gen I mean it's just so so beautiful. Remember those great shots? We'd have the, the trees down and there'd be, remember one where the, the ducks were on the lake and then all of a sudden the General Lee comes Lake. flying over and the ducks are, ducks are just getting out of the way. And... <laughs> there was one essential element to the Dukes of Hazard that people often overlook because, uh, you know, Roscoe and Boss and then you and the, not just the camaraderie. <laughs> not just the camaraderie. No. No. More than that. <laughs> no. I'm talking about Paul Baxley. Yes. And Paul Baxley and his guys created the tone of this show, the pace of this show, the spirit of this show. They did it down in Georgia. And by the time we came out of there, there was an extraordinary thing happening. He took the chemistry of the cast yeah. and the fun of the idea and made it, brought it to life. Him and those stunt guys, Gary and Craig and Junior and Henry and Bob Orison, mm -hmm. uh, deserve credit. 
Oh, absolutely. for making us look absolutely. good week after week, and and to me it was yeah. his show. Yeah. They were fabulous. These guys did more stunts before lunch than most people do in a week, and there was a shot where the the General Lee was driving through a ravine somewhere, and the two police cars came up and jumped on either side of the creek and then oh. hit, boom, oh, and then and spun and then landed. Yes. And the General Lee, boom, right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was bring in specialists for that. I love Georgia. I thought I it was just Georgia was great. Georgia's a beautiful state. Didn't have to build anything, do anything. Jump the car through a barn, they'd say, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We're going to turn it down anyway. Yeah. Help us out. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. No Never, and all the people come out and help you out. Like, God, here, you know, you got to pay him 50 million bucks to turn around. <laughs> there would drive the horses, the cattle, the cows, yeah. everything. It was just absolutely. <laughs> Jimmy and I were in the police car and it flipped over, right? And suddenly, and the car is still smoking, and Gary jumped out and everything. And I look around and here comes Jimmy Bass toward. The, I thought, oh, I said, Jimmy, are you going to do this? And he said, Yeah. I said, Oh my God! And I turned to Paul and I said, "It's still smoking. <laughs> it could catch fire." And he and you said, "Peg, we only had enough gas in to flip it over like a half a cup. <laughs> it's not going." I said, "Oh God!" <laughs> and then you said, "Baby, you can do it." <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did Anybody it. calls me baby. <laughs> Hi, Paul. No, listen, she didn't back away <laughs> from anything. we did it. And Paul had so much fun doing close-ups, if any of you recall. Not to no. me, he never okay, did. Well, then let me just yeah. Not to you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so he did it ready, and he told me not to frown for the hour before, and don't squint your eyes. That's not a pretty thing when you squint your eyes, and don't wrinkle anything, and suck it up, honey, and it's going to be great. And just think beautiful thoughts, and I'm like, okay. So he had me running into the shot, and pivoting, and turning, and my hair swirling, and... You did great hair. Well, so. I, I, yeah, I mean, Paul did great hair. <laughs> and, do that thing, do that. And he had me choreograph it. Paul, how do I do it? Oh, come on. <laughs> there it was. There there was. was. Sort of. Sort of had it there. And then Paul, I said, okay, Paul. I, he goes, are you ready, baby? And I there said, you okay. Go, you I see? said, I'm ready. And I didn't frown for the hour, and I didn't think bad thoughts for an hour, and I wasn't mad for an hour. And I, and I got up there and I twisted and I turned and I did what he said and sat on the General Lee. And then I looked out and the whole set had their eyes averted. I went, this is a first. I must have been really bad. This is incredible. So I looked at Paul. I saw him behind the camera and his eyes were down. <laughs> I went, oh my God, I guess I really embarrassed myself on that. Jeez, I better. <gasps> and I was out of my top. <laughs> Everybody, and I just thought, this is, Paul hey. is so classy. I, I wouldn't have heard it. <laughs> <one. laughs> trust me, trust me. I took a look first. <laughs> That was the, wasn't that, was that the it. picture that was in your hat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Paul has but that Polaroid to this thing. We never saw <laughs> any of those pictures. Uh. We never saw anything. Everybody looked the other way. Nobody made any jokes about that. And that was, you know, from the top. That was a Paul Baxley class, class. Well, you know, class that, act and taught everybody else to act like Paul, that. Paul, are you still showing those on Thursday night? <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. now did, if I'm not mistaken, one of the jumps we did was a world record. Oh, uh, yes. In it Oxnard. Was, Gary going yeah. across the river, I think. And uh, now some of these quote-unquote daredevil people will promote something like that for weeks, you know, build it up, evil can evil kind of folks, build it up, we're going to try to jump over this thing. These guys did that in the course of a day's work. Jump, okay, yeah. take two, go back, jump the other car, jump the police car. And that they were doing that all day long. Then they go off and do something else. But it was a world record jump, and you can see it in the title shots of the Dukes. When we shot in Georgia, it was this time of year, so the days were really short, and it rained all the time. Remember, it was yes. snowed once. And it, it rained when it rains on that red Georgia clay. It is slicker than a ball tire semi on a mile of wet asphalt. <laughs> yeah. And we were we were in the General Lee, and uh, Richie was towing us in the in the camera car, and. It, it got slick, but we'd been working with him for, for a couple of weeks, so it couldn't have been the first show. And we knew that he, he told us, he said, this is going to get a little weird out here, but don't worry about it. I got it under control. And in, in there, you know what the expression keep it between the ditches means because there's a ditch on either side of the road. 
So we're in the car, and I think I had the brown corduroy thing on, so that was re uh, Repo Man. And we're, all of a sudden, the car starts to slide to one side, and I'm oh. driving <laughs> like that. And it was a car that had the full cage, because the first General Lee's had the, the picture cars, had the full cages in them. And all of a sudden, we go slap up against one thing over there, which means the tire's down in the ditch, and then boom, it popped back up. And then slap, we slapped on the other side on mine. And I know I, I, when I see the shot, I can tell when it is because I'm a pretty tall guy, and I'm I'm sitting <laughs> I'm sitting down there like that, and it looks like I'm a, I'm about you know yeah. your nephew's size, and uh, <laughs> and I remember it was that it was it was during that, and people have said, how come you look so short in that car? And that's why it's because I was I was hanging on for dear life. You're right about John being the driver on the thing because he used to be very generous with his driving. Not only was he very good at it, but he was very generous. People would come to the set and he'd take them for a little spin around the back lot and my uh, my older son was about five at the time and uh, he came to visit the set all dressed up like like Bo oh. and uh, John says come on let's go for a little ride and he goes okay and put him in the put him in the general and then a cloud of dust he was gone just in a flash and it was 20 or 30 minutes before he came sliding back into the hazard square <laughs> and Ryan gets out of the car like this with <laughs> big wide eyes and kind of half smile and says I love it. That's so much fun. we went fast <laughs> <laughs> What's your fondest memory, Sonny? Do you have any memories? Don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> My fondest memory? Uh, I think it was when uh, when Daisy was... Uh, I was talking to Daisy, and she was explaining to me uh, how good uh, her cousins were. And... Uh, I was? Yeah. The cameraman, the cameraman cut it. After a while, but but uh, your blouse was open a little bit, you know, and it was a uh, that was your favorite memory. That was my favorite, you know, but not the your favorite memory. <laughs> your favorite memory. That was my favorite <laughs> both. <laughs> Very quick. Yeah. Well, I can't top that. Um, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Rod Amato asked me, he says, uh, he says, can you do some of that uh, CB stuff, you know, CB stuff? We're down in Georgia, you know, and I, I still have it. I wrote it on the back of an envelope. Or was, breaker one, breaker one. Might be crazy, but I ain't dumb. Crazy cooter coming at you. And that's why I always pick up the CB and say, breaker one, breaker one. Might be crazy, but I ain't dumb. Crazy cooter coming at you. Any old deep boys home in a hazard now. Come on on. Lost sheep, you got your ears on? Years later, I'm going down the street to my basketball game, and there's some kids playing on the other side of a fence in a yard. And I hear this kid go, Breaker one, breaker one, crazy <laughs> cooter coming at you. <laughs> at that point, I realized, you know, what an important part of Americana we had become. And it was a really, really good feeling. And uh, the whole memory of the Dukes of Hazard to me uh, uh, was a. Uh, Real blessing because I got to be a part of a unit that brought a lot of happiness to this whole world. I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of it. And that's it. I'll second that. Uh, for me, it was a double blessing just getting the call that told me I was going to get to be a part of this and to share this, uh, not only for the years that we made it, but who was to know we were going to get to share so much for so long. Uh, that was my happiest and fondest memory was getting the call to say I was going to get to be a part of this and, uh, and to fit in with such a magnificent crowd of people that, like Ben says and like Jimmy says, we all were able to be on the same page and to uh, create something of joy. There's so much tragedy on TV these days that we were able to create something that brings happiness and joy. And, and thanks to the Dukes of Hazzard, um, I have enough money to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> so long as I don't, so long as I don't live past next Thursday. <laughs> A thing that that always stands out in my mind was in Georgia, in front of the Boar's Nest. Um, so it was early, early on, and somebody drove by in an El Camino, I think, and blew that horn. Oh. And and. Uh, Paul Picard, I, I think it was, it was the only time I ever remember Paul Picard, other than behind a desk, <laughs> got up and grabbed a teamster and chased that kid down and bought that horn from him. <laughs> and uh, that's where the, the <laughs> Is that right? That's right. That's right. came from. So, so that's, a, that's, I mean, that's such a huge part of the show. 
the car flying through the air and that horn happening. And, and uh, if it weren't for Paul really being on his game that day, I'm, I'm proud to have been part of it, just been there when that happened. Shortly after we finished the last, uh, the fifth episode, I went to Mexico and I got a phone call from Paul Picard and said, when can you get back in town? And I said, I'd be back in maybe a month or so. He said, well, get back as soon as you can. We've been picked up for 22. <laughs> now that is my favorite memory. <laughs> Were you surprised? <laughs> nope, I wasn't no, surprised no. at all. I, I would like to insert here with all of this beauty, it was also very, very funny. Yeah. I, I did, um, I've done a lot of other things, but this one is, well, it was funny. It was fun. My God, the Waltons, I was so dear, you couldn't stand it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, but now look, I'm crying because this was fun. And I have to say that the Dukes of Hazard for me and everybody that, that was on the Dukes of Hazard and until this day remain family with me, every single one of you. And John, my, my little brother, who I always got to bail out of trouble whenever he had some kind of girl trouble or something, or he didn't think he was being a good boy. And I said, no, you're being a good boy. You're a good guy. And I mean, all the things. I nice just... cover. <laughs> but I See, had she's still so, watching my back. <laughs> so much fun. I had so much fun with everybody. And I mean, it was a job, but it was so much more than that to me. It, it taught me so much. And I really learned about life, and I learned about relationships and getting along for a really long time with a lot of people and it was the greatest and everybody gave me so much love and gave me so much it just changed my entire life and the way I look at life. You know the, the one character in the show we haven't mentioned was the one that embodies the spirit of the show you know and, 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 and probably is the most famous of all the performers on the show and uh, that's the General Lee. <laughs> Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Straightening the curves, flattening the hills. Someday the mountain might get them, but the law never will. Making their way. That's just a little bit more than the normal life. Just a good old boy. They wouldn't change if they could. Fighting the system like a two modern day Robin Hood. <laughs> 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 